Coming up next, Moment of Recovery. Exclusively on Recovery Channel. Welcome to the part two of the teaching I promised to talk on the power of the blood. Now, when we look at the teaching on the blood, it's very vital, you know, as it relates to the curative power of the blood sacrifice. Now, we have been talking about the bloodline challenges and how to revert it, how to bring about positive changes. Today, as I speak on the part two of this uh, miracle meal, which is the communion. I want you to see something here because revelation is power. There's something about the blood. The Bible says the life of the flesh is in the blood. In the realm of the spirit, there's one thing that speaks. It has a voice and that's blood. Now, I want you to see in this section the power of blood sacrifice. I want to give you four points how powerful the blood is, how blood of bulls and animals were offered and it changed and stopped plagues. How much more when I present the power of the blood of Jesus, you see how I feel, the efficacy of the blood of Christ. We're going to look at four things that were done with the blood of bulls and animals, how it brought about a change. Now, first of all, look at the first case in the Bible. Uh, Noah, after the flood, offered a sacrifice to the Lord. And when God smelt it, when the sacrifice took place, and blood was spilled, something happened. We find that God began to speak. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord made a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every, everything living as I have done. Why the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Just a sacrifice to find that God reversed a curse. He said I will no longer destroy the earth with flood. So the first thing we see, the power of blood. Noah's sacrifice after the flood animals, bulls, and God made a covenant with him not to destroy the generations anymore with flood water. Now, is it not powerful, the, sac the, the, the blood of bulls sacrificed on the altar, lambs, God entered a covenant with man never to destroy the world anymore with flood. So you can imagine how the strength of the blood of Jesus Christ when it is taken in faith, how anything that is in your bloodline that is a covenant, a curse, can be reversed. For example, if it's in your bloodline, maybe a curse from God. You know, for example, there are certain cities that did not receive missionaries. They killed missionaries. And the blood of the matter brings a curse upon a land, a part a tribe. There's a particular place in Nigeria where missionaries were killed. is one of the most underdeveloped places today in Nigeria. Yet the first upstairs was built in that place. Why? You see graveyards of missionaries that were murdered by the indigents. They did not embrace the gospel, so there's a curse. Now, if you come from such a bloodline, it can be reversed as you put the communion table in place and ask for divine reversal. 
that whatever runs in your tribe as a result of a curse in your bloodline, that the blood of Jesus Christ will reverse it or cause it to revert to blessings. So we can attend to such things through the blood of Jesus. Look at what the blood of animals could achieve, how much more the blood of Christ. Second point I want to give you, um, the blood of the Passover lamb, you know, re repaired the dead angel in Exodus chapter 12 and 13. Chapter 12, 13 downward, you find when the angel of death came because of the lamb that had been killed and the blood had been put on the lintel, when the angel of death came, he passed. He couldn't settle because it repaired. It, was so, it had so much power. Praise God. So if we begin to apply the blood of Jesus upon our home, our children, you can imagine the efficacy of that blood. If the blood of animals from the backyard of people could achieve this, how much more the very blood of Jesus Christ. The third one I'm going to bring again, you find that there was death in the land in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, 1 to 30, which you can also find in 2 Samuel chapter 24 to 25. That David had sinned against God and the angel of death was killing people. Uh, 70,000 men died in one day because of the sin of David. And when David now offered a sacrifice of animals and raised an altar, the Bible said the plague ceased. 70,000 men had died when animals were slaughtered on the altar, the blood. Suddenly the angel of death or the angel that had been killing men stopped. This is the blood of an animal. Look at the power. There's power in blood sacrifice. I'm telling you. The fourth point again I want to show you before I pray with you today. I want you to just see what the blood of animals achieved in the Old Testament. The first one, Noah, a curse was reversed that the land would no longer be caused by flood. Two, we find the Passover lamb in Exodus 12 repaired death the dead angel could not enter the houses. Then the third one, David had seen, the blood was raised as a sacrifice, and then something happened, the angel stopped killing. The fourth point, we find Job, he made sacrifice continually. Every time his children came together to celebrate, Job was afraid he must have seen and caused God in their hearts or whatever, and he offered sacrifices. And something will happen, we find in Job chapter 1, that because of this act that Job did continually, that there was an edge of protection around him. He kept on offering sacrifices continually. Job chapter 1 verse 5. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and caused God in their heart. Thus did Job continually. Thus Job did continually. And then look at something here. The Bible says in verse 9 that Satan answered the Lord and said, Do Job fear God for nothing? Has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and above, about all the heart on every side? You see, because of the blessing that, because of the sacrifice, everything, there was an edge of protection around Job and his household. Now look at what the blood of bulls could achieve. How much more the blood of Jesus? You can see the communion table when it is given its place, it will release the very life and the very power of God. And now this is from the incorruptible seed of God, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. We find in first John chapter one, sorry, John chapter one, verse 14, that the word of God was made flesh. So Jesus did not come from, from a, a descent that is connected to a man. It was the word of God that was made flesh. A man did not meet with, with Mary. When the angel of the dead said, when the angel of the Lord said to Mary that he was going to have a child, Mary said, it's not possible because I have, no, I have not known a man. And he said that God, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. That means Jesus did not come from the corruptible seed of man. It was the word of God made flesh. And then we find in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 that the life, this very life that comes from God can make any man a new creature. 
And then Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 tells us that this has become our overcoming force. And this is why we as Christians, the church, must never neglect the communion table. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, as often as you do this, as often, do it often, repair darkness, anything in your bloodline, as often. I pray for those of you watching this broadcast that the power of affliction will disappear from your bloodline. That negative bloodline, I reverse it. Cancer, high blood pressure, name it. Weaknesses, inability to be able to remember, articulate yourself, weak mind, weak soul, inability to push in life. Whatever is known with your bloodline, inability to attract favor, inability to attract the opposite sex, you're having challenges with having a mate, whatever is in your bloodline that is premature death, name it. Anything that is negative, the Bible says it brought them out with silver, with gold. Not one of them was favored among their tribe. Now by this miracle meal, I have bought every negative feebleness in your bloodline. That weakness of HIV, cancer, name it, high blood pressure, whatever it is, diabetes, it's a, it can create feebleness. In the name of Jesus, we reverse and we command everything to revert. Take it in faith. And expect a miracle. I pray for your healing right now. I pray for your deliverance. I pray for the perfection of everything in your life. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Take this communion. Often teach your children to do it. Put it in their bag as they go to school. In the boarding house. Put it there. Teach your children. This is the medicine you have. Use it positively. To protect them. The Bible said overcame for them to overcome affliction. We have a lot of things going on today in the society. Witchcraft, divination, sorcery in schools, boarding houses, hostels, in the corporate world. Let them have it by their bedside. When you wake up in the middle of the night, you have a terrible dream. Neutralize it with the blood. Paralyze the enemy's infantry. They are sort of the wicked one. Nullify it and give God all the praise. You will not be destroyed. That negative blood pattern is reversed in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day. Now pray this prayer with me. If you want to have eternal life, which is the most important, because Lazarus died, he was raised back from the dead. But did he did not die, he died. Methuselah, he lived so long, it was almost a thousand years, but he still died. That's how temporary this life is. And so you need to put into consideration eternity. Let's pray. Oh Lord, I repent of my sins and admit I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Save me, dear Jesus, wash away my sins. I confess you from today as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you up from the dead for my justification. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Oh.